So um, there's been a disagreement of all. There are just different options for what to do with the afternoon. One is to go walking with the bushman, and the other one is to go flying. And we always choose flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is bushman country there in the Mahari Khadi. And one of the experiences which those camps offer is to go and spend some time with Bushman people, learning a little bit about their lifestyles. I've actually done that before. And Boris and Bambi, who had arrived the previous day, had taken the opportunity to visit the Bushmen, and so had seen it. I was just in the aeroplanes, and I love to share flight with people who have never flown. guys would like to take two of you to go and fly with them. So it just seemed like an obvious barter of experiences for my Kinsu to go and spend some time with the Bushmen. What's your name? Kui. 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 Have you been in the aeroplane? And while that was happening, for us to take first time two of the Bushmen flying in our aeroplane. <laughs> You gotta put that on your head, right? You go. Hey, go, right? You got yours, put this by your mouth like that. It's okay, it's okay. okay. You make it. This is not eaten but used as a toy. See, it cannot sting him because he's flattening his hand. Okay, we're on your right wing, so don't turn around without looking at us. Oh, there they are. Got the privilege of flying with Captain Linda Sollers and I, Pilot Bambi. Are you formating on us or should we turn around and formate on you? No, you change your format on us. <laughs> <laughs> and Linda and uh, Bambi, are you with us? Oh yeah, we're just uh, coming up on your line. Where's your home? Okay, we are coming up your rear, we'll formate on your right wing. We're caught up to your left. Okay, we're looking for Mike and Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you go roll that plane, guys? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, I'm going to come up over the, uh, out to the wings towards the sun, okay? Okay. <laughs> so good, We're gonna go like this, okay? Right over. Okay. They must be thinking, what the fuck? I don't know, but there's gonna be Bushman lunch all over that dashboard seat. Okay. 
We're going oh. faster. <laughs> now look outside. What? Oh. 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 So fun to be in the low wing again. <laughs> okay, it's actually gonna be blowing away. Gentle, gentle, go this way. Okay, alright. Nice. Okay, we'll straight. Turn right turn okay, we've got to put it back slowly. Alright. Yes, we've got to pull it slowly. Yeah, we're going to be on your uh, There you go. <laughs> Deal and actually a very very gentle touch. Three flying, you know, not fighting the aeroplane, um, which is quite unusual. People generally who've never flown fight. He tells me he's never driven a car, and so it was his first time ever. And he got the feel of it, and he flew us around for like five minutes. Quite, quite a big smile. <laughs> Lovely to bring flight to people. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so like when you did a 360, huh? like he felt like his interstellar was like coming to the chest. Coming out of his mouth. Yeah, he almost like... So there are a great number of fantastic Mike Blythe flying stories, of which the absolute indisputed greatest is the granny story. Bambi'd heard about the story, but never heard the story itself. So I thought he'd play just a little trick on Bambi. <laughs> Uh, amazing. That Jeez. granny story is Where so are you? fantastic. <laughs> Where did you tell it? Mm. I told the story. Really? We, I thought you were standing behind me. No. Where were you? You're, you're joking, right? <laughs> <laughs> at the stage of the story happening in Mike's life, he was at quite a low point. Completely broke, yeah. living on friends' couches. And in that context, one of your mates said to you, Mike is going to be the next big thing. Yeah. And you need to fly. Yeah, and so I started flying these things, and then, and then I, I started teaching people to fly a little bit. But I'd never flown a trike. Do you know, you know what a trike is? It's like a hang glider with a tricycle <laughs> under gear. And I met this chap making them in Durban. He'd made one, which was a prototype thing. He was like a hang glider pilot, and he'd put an engine on, and it, had, and it didn't have any brakes. But it flew. It flew quite well. So I watched him fly it around, and I walked up and introduced myself, and I asked him, could I, maybe I can be your... Johannesburg agent for them. So he said, okay, that's fine. Went to Durban, taught me to fly, and in about two and a half hours, he sent me solo. And I was very wobbly on this machine because completely different kind of flying, you know. And he said, okay, you're flying well enough, you can take it back to Johannesburg and maybe before you start, yeah, sell them. Before you start to take too many people flying, maybe try and get a little bit of that wobbliness out of your flying. <laughs> and um, that Sunday, I remember so clearly, I had the trike parked there and I was talking to some friends or what have you, and I was hoping for some customers to come along and this big BMW drove into the airfield and parked <laughs> right, right next to the runway. And this guy got out and his kids and his wife and he started walking towards me. I said, do you fly these things? So I said, yes, I do. 
do you teach people to fly them as well? I said, yeah. I do. <laughs> and, 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 and you sell them? I said, yeah, I sell them. I said, take, take me for a flight. I said, sure, I'll take you for a flight if you're interested. They put him in, I said, desperate for like money, you know. Like. <laughs> anyway, took him for a flight, successfully landed. I had to switch the engine off because you're coasting in and you put your feet against the wheel to stop. <laughs> then he said, oh, that's fantastic, it flies so well. I want you to take my mother-in-law for a flight. And I said, where's your mother-in-law? She's, she's in the car. And you know, I should have realized there was something wrong because the car was like sitting a bit sideways like this. <laughs> and then he went to the back door and then I saw him negotiating. Anyway, this large, large woman. And brings her over and he said, this is Granny. Please take her for a flight. And I, I, then I clicked. It was Granny who had the money. She was going to bankroll this whole thing, and the important thing was to take her for a bit of a spin, you know. So I got her in, because you sit at the back with your legs open, and, there, and then the pilot sits in front of you with, over there. You've got to open your legs. And she had her legs like this. I said, no, you've got to open your legs. I like, <laughs> and she kept, I, I said, no, you've got to open your legs. I've got to sit there. You've got to like, open the legs, you know, looking at me like this, you know, like these very big thighs. Anyway, eventually she's sitting over here like this. Headset on and some goggles on. And that first trike, we didn't have electric start, had a pull start at the back. And so it's a push of the props behind the plane, obviously. Yeah. So, so, so the trike is over here like this, and, and she's sitting over here, <laughs> like looking at me like this, and I'm standing at the back, and she's probably wondering, what's he doing standing next to me? I mean, he's supposed to be flying this thing. <laughs> and I put my, my right foot in front of the back wheel, and I, first of all, I switched the mag switch. So if you're sitting in, in the front, the switch is here underneath. That's where it was, and you're flying like this, and the person's behind you. So I switched it on, put the foot in front of the wheel, and when I started the engine, it was full power, instantly. <laughs> <Whoa! laughs> and now I'm holding the seat, and her face is like right here, looking at me like this, and the whole plane is bucking like this, bucking, and it's on my foot, and it's like incredibly painful, and it's the only thing that's stopping this thing from going, you know, and, and I. I I remember so clearly thinking, I can't step away and just let this thing go because she's going to be killed this morning. <laughs> so eventually I dived for the switch which was over there and I pulled my foot away from the wheel. <laughs> and the thing took off like a rocket. <laughs> and I fell, I was holding on the seat and I fell underneath, grabbed the bar in front, grabbed the bar again like this in front and hung on like this and was dragged underneath the trike. No, you're not even let go. You go through the propping Yeah, you can't let go because you go through the propeller. And the other thing I remember so clearly was I'm either going to hit something like the hanger or the fence or the windsock or something. I didn't know where I was going. Or I'm going to take off. One of those, one of those two things. And I took off. So now I'm, fl now I'm under the seat, right? And she thinks she's alone. And then I pulled myself forward like this and pulled my head up and she's like, ah! <laughs> and it was climbing and climbing and I'd bashed myself underneath when I'd been dragged along. So I was trying to catch my breath and holding on and I think, I'm thinking to myself, okay, now I'm so high that if I let go, I'm definitely dead, so don't let go. And the thing was turning like this. So it was climbing, doing this climbing turn. So here I am initially taking off like this and after a short while, I'm hanging out like this sideways, you know. And I tried to get it to straighten the wings. So I held on with one hand and I put my hand like this. She put her hands out, put them back. Put the hands out, put the hands out, put them back. Stra straighten the fucking wing. Put the hand out, put them back like that. And then I thought, no, I'm not going to take a chance climbing in. I'm going to switch off. And I looked back and there was this field, big, big field over there. And I thought, okay, if I switch off now, was coming towards the turn, I knew that with the power off it levels. And so that's exactly what it did. So I switched it off and the trike leveled like this. And I went, now I'm going backwards towards over the field. <laughs> and coming down at like 300 foot a minute or something like that, 60 kilometers an hour, going backwards. You know, I suppose it's bound to be an, an unsuccessful landing like that. <laughs> so I let go on my back. And I remember so clearly, I. <gasps> And then I was out. What happened with the trike is the front wheel went into a ditch and she somersaulted twice with the pieces of trike coming off and then landed in the wing and all the bits and pieces of the micro -light. And apparently she got out there, she was like covered in dust. She was like staggered around and she, she just looked at me like this and then she walked away, like, you know, wandered off. Anyway, her son arrived picked me up, put me in the car, and then about two hours later, I woke up in hospital. 
and then Granny came to see me, and she still had mud all over her sand and shit, you know. And she had streaks from because she'd been crying. And she came and she gave me a hug, and you know, it was quite, you know, moving moment. That. So I had a broken rib, and I had concussion, obviously. Had concussion. But I went home the next day, and I was like very sorry for myself. I had no money. The first microlight that they'd made, I'd smashed to pieces. Anyway, I took it down to Durban. I said, listen, guys, there's been a little bit of a... <laughs> anyway, I went back up to Joburg, sitting now in the flying school office, and I see the BMW arrive. And he, like, parks there. He's like, it's park stop. And he gets out, and he walks to the office, and I think, oh, fuck, she's died. And I've killed her. Now this is the beginning of the fucking whole lot of drama. And he walked in, he said, you all right? I said, yeah. And he said... You're still going to uh, sell those things? I said, yeah. Are you still going to teach people to fly? I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, my name's Casper Walker. Yes, 10,000 rand. My deposit for one of the machines and you teach me to fly. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first, was it? No, was no, no, first no, 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 that wasn't my first crash. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. no, 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 no. That, that was like my sixth crash. My that is by far my best crash. <laughs> <laughs> Visiting one of my favourite places in the world is on the cards for tomorrow, but the weather forecast is not looking good. Making it back for our big celebration on the next day will get interesting. <laughs> 